Hey guys, it's Penguin here and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we're going to be covering five different markets that are doing very, very well ever since the auction house merge. Now I have picked a wide range of different markets. So if you are a beginner, there will be something here for you. And if you're a little bit of a more advanced goblin, there will also be some markets here for you. Of course, you'll be able to pick and choose which ones you actually want to do or which interest you. And just quickly, I am going to put a disclaimer out that these markets will likely change on the day-to-day -day basis. I mean, even previously, some of these methods that I'm going to be talking about might be super, super good one day, and then something happens to the market, it crashes a little bit for maybe a day or three days, and then it returns. So if you guys are checking out this video, regardless of when you see it, and let's say something isn't profitable, definitely don't give up on it. Check back in a few hours, check back in a few days, a few weeks, whatever you have to do, just don't fully forget about it. Also, keep in mind that technically we are all competitors nowadays in commodities since the merge, so you know there's likely somebody attempting the same thing as you if you're seeing this recently. But without further ado, we're going to get right into the first market. As always, if you guys are enjoying these videos, if you find them helpful, I would love it if you like the video or even subscribe. But here we go. So to get started, we're going to talk about probably one of the most popular methods and honestly my favorite on this list. And this is alchemy transmutes. Now, alchemy transmutes have always been super good. If you guys aren't familiar with this market, basically as a alchemist, you can turn a set or a specific material into another one through these so-called transmutes, which is just a recipe. Now, of course, the most popular ones out there is your living steel transmute. There's some trillium transmutes, etc. But really, I'm kind of talking about the non-cooldown ones for the sake of this video. Now, what I'm going to do with each kind of market I talk about, I'm going to give you some examples. So you can decide to do these same exact examples or use these to find other markets. It's completely up to you. But the first example I want to talk about, and honestly my favorite on this list, is the Arcane Crystals Transmute. Now, first of all, transmutes are profitable due to the fact that transmute mastery exists. If you guys have an alchemist, if you level up your vanilla alchemy all the way up to 300, you will be able to choose a mastery. And you have three options. You have transmute, potion, and elixir. And for the case of these specific markets, you want to pick transmute mastery and you will have the chance of procking some extra materials. On average, if you have a transmute master, you will gain about 20% more materials whenever you complete these transmutes. So this brings us to our first example, which is those arcane crystals. Now currently, I'm going to show a picture on screen, but currently the crystals go for 195 gold on the auction house. These crystals turn into Arcanite bars, which the Arcanite bars are actually only priced at 180 gold. So looking at this at a bare eye, people would say, okay, this is not profitable, right? Like I'm buying something for 195 gold to sell for 180. That's a 15 gold loss. But Transmute Mastery actually makes this profitable. The reasoning is, is that we are going to be gaining 20% more materials when completing this transmute. So if we take that 195, divide it by 1.2, our actual crafting cost for these Arcanite bars is 162.5 gold. Now, keep in mind this is an average percentage, so of course if you buy two Arcane Crystals, you will likely not hit that mark. But if you buy in bulk, if you buy 100 crystals, 150, whatever, you will of course get more procs and it will even out. But just keep in mind that this is a 20% average, it's not always guaranteed. But, you know, to continue, we have those Arcanite bars, which our actual crafting cost would be about 162 gold. Like I said, the Arcanite Bars themselves is currently selling on the auction house for 180, which is actually pretty low for the region. You know, earlier, a few days ago, 
I was actually selling these bars for the exact same price as the crystal. They were both about 200 gold, but it has fallen a little bit, so it depends on when you're checking this out. But even at 180 gold, we're still making about a 9 gold profit after auction house fee. So now, you know, 9 gold doesn't seem like a ton, but if you just buy, let's say, you know, you buy 500 arcane crystals, you're going to proc and get a pretty good amount back, and then, you know, your 500 and something times 9 turns into a pretty good amount of profit. The best thing about this is that this is semi-AFK, and honestly, it doesn't stop there. This specific item, we're going to be talking about a different market that you can add onto this, but that's going to be saved for the next section. Just some two quick other examples that I've seen to be profitable on the region is Serenite Bars into Titanium. Currently, you can turn eight Serenite Bars into one Titanium Bar, and the cost of that would be 176 gold for eight Serenite on the auction house. Taking into account the extra procs, our crafting cost would turn into 147 gold for a single titanium. Currently, titanium is selling for 200 gold on the auction house. I did see this a little bit lower at about 170-ish a few days ago, but it's gone up. So definitely check out for titanium. There are, of course, so many more transmutes out there, but I could talk about this for ages. So go and explore, find some that are good. You know, there's panther gems, there's living steel, trillium, whatever you want, but we're going to move on to the next topic. And the next one is smelting, aka mining, because technically smelting is a part of the mining profession. But the thing is, is that we are not gathering, we are actually crafting. And kind of how I talked about before, we're going to go back to the arcane crystals and the arcanite bars. What you can do, let's say the arcanite bars just isn't really making it for you, you know, nine gold profit, not really feeling it, you can take this a next step further. And this is using those Arcanite bars to turn into Enchanted Elementium bars. Now currently this bar sells for anywhere between 1800 to 1900 gold, depending on the day that you're checking it out on the NA region. The bulk of the cost of this bar is 10 Arcanite bars. I talked about how our cost for Arcanite bars was about 162 gold, so you know that times 10 is about 1620 gold per bar. Now you do have to buy some other stuff, but it should only cost you about 60 gold or so, and then of course there's some vendor items, but it takes very little gold additional to the Arcanite bars. That means our crafting cost, let's say, is 1680, 1680 gold, and you can sell it for about 1900. Of course, there's an auction house fee in there, but let's say you're making about 250 gold. That is pretty good. Once again, I sell these very, very fast. The same thing with the Arcanite bars, but you can kind of get into two markets with one method. You know, you use these arcane crystals, transmute them into Arcanite bars, and then you can, you know, save some of the Arcanite bars for the auction house and then actually sell the Elementium bars as well. Moving on, we also have the fell steel bars. This requires fell iron as well as eternium, and this is a pretty good flip for me as well. Now, it heavily depends on fell iron. Right now, you know, it's actually not profitable because somebody reset the price of fell iron, but yesterday I was selling these fell steel bars for about 160 gold, and my crafting cost for them was about 120, 130. So yet again, the best thing to do is to sell these in bulk, but it is very worth it if you can get your hands on cheap materials. Another one to throw out there is Hardened Elementium, yet again another smelting bar. Now currently this is actually not profitable on the NA region, but it is profitable on the EU region. However, NA people keep checking back and of course look at other bars if you want to start smelting. Moving on, we have probably the most simple category, and this is easy flips. What I mean by this is just things that don't require professions. All it requires is maybe a little bit of time and just checking the auction house pretty frequently. The first thing you can do is sell vendor items. 
Now, this has always been a popular method of making gold. This can be as simple as, you know, going to the blacksmith trainer and supply person and buy blacksmith hammers, put them on the auction house and see if they sell. You know, you can buy up some light parchment, put them on the auction house, you know, it costs a few copper, sell it for maybe a gold or so, and just make a little bit of profit there. However, the specific thing I want to highlight with vendor items is Shadowlands vendor items. Now, it has always been pretty good if you, let's say, have the discount with Exalted Reputation, you could put some of the vendor items up for sale for a little bit of a discount, but more than what you're actually paying. For example, the default price nowadays for Penumbra Thread is 11 gold. But if you're Exalted, you can buy it for 8.8 .8 gold. Throw it up on the auction house for 10 gold, that seems like a pretty good deal to people who have to buy it for 11, and you're making some gold yourself. I've seen this being very popular with boreal shards on the NA region, and you can make a few gold just by selling these simple vendor items. Of course, beware of deposit cost, but generally these sell very fast with this new region-wide auction house. The other sort of easy flip I want to talk about is basic conversions. Now the specific example I have in mind are primals. If you guys don't know, you can get 10 of the motes of blank and turn it into one primal blank. For example, you can turn 10 motes of mana into one primal mana. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been checking the auction house, and let's say there are some motes of mana for nine gold apiece. I buy up a handful, and that means my crafting cost for one primal mana is about 90 gold. Now the best thing is, is that the full-on primal manas are actually selling for 140 or 150 gold. Basically, maybe 30 seconds of work, turned 90 gold into 150, all I have to do is post it on the auction house, and it sells very, very fast. Personally, on the NA region, I've seen the best deals with mana as well as water. Fire seems to be always really expensive, while other ones seem to be very, very cheap. And it really, really varies. Sometimes I can find 60 motes, which turns into 6 primals, or I may only find 12 motes, which is only one primal. It really depends, but just simple things like this can make you a good amount of gold, especially if you do it often. Moving on, we have our number four category, which is non-commodities. Now, this is not a secret. A lot of people have been staying away from the region side of the auction house and has been sticking to the non-stackable items, aka the non-commodities. But if you haven't, and let's say you've forgotten about some of these items, there are some really great deals happening. By non-commodities, I'm basically highlighting, let's say, bags. We have our novice gear, our crafter's marks gear, we have legendaries, and we have mounts. But there's a lot of old world bags, for example, that you can get really, really good deals on. Just recently, I was able to pick up a ton of Shalderai silk for less than 50 silver apiece. If you guys don't know, it takes 90 silk to create one silk weave satchel. Buying them at let's round to about 50 silver, that means it cost me 45 gold to craft a satchel. I've been selling those bags for 100 gold plus, or even 200 gold, depending on the day. And there is a ton of silk to go around on the auction house every single day. You can do the same thing with deep sea bags as deep sea satin is getting cheaper and cheaper. You can do this with the cataclysm bags. You have the otherworldly as well as the hydro bag, which is selling for anywhere between four to 6,000 gold on my server. You even have hex weave bags that you can create nether weave bags. So many, and just of course your shadowlands bags as well, which are just very, very good. Then, of course, I mean, I've already talked about this in a previous video, but of course, you have legendaries. Right now is the cheapest time to level up legendaries, and they are doing super well. I will leave a video about if legendaries are worth it in the description down below, but if you're interested, I highly recommend checking it out. Definitely one of the best markets at the moment. Then you have the more beginner-friendly novice gear, as well as the Mark IV and the First Ones gear, which is doing very well every single day for me, with some minimal cancel scanning. 
And then you have your mounts, so your sky golems, your panthers, your mechano hogs, your flying machines, all of that traditional mounts are doing very good as well. Then moving on to our final category, we actually have some normal commodities. Let's say you're somebody who doesn't have a ton of old world professions, you're a little bit newer to the gold making business, and you need some things to craft. Now this is very, very dependent on the time, as I have literally seen these markets go to profit for maybe let's say 30 minutes and then crash back down. So definitely keep an eye out, but some of these markets have been very, very good. The first one is Feast. Now the large meals of cooking haven't been super profitable that I've seen, but Feast have been doing pretty good. This is the Gluttonous Feast, as well as just the Palatable Feast. They both, you know, have a different crafting cost and a way different selling point, but they have both seen plenty of profit. I believe the last time I checked, I can make about 15 gold profit per feast, which is pretty good. Also, another thing to keep out for is enchants. Tenant enchants, as well as some of the eternal enchants, have been profitable. I believe eternal stats becomes profitable every once in a while. You have the celestial guidance that has become profitable, and you have some of the tenants, which do some pretty good profit as well. Then you have some of the leatherworking items. Now, bardings were profitable for actually probably almost a full week, but recently they have crashed back down. But who knows, maybe those bardings will go back in price. Just keep an eye out for them and armor kits as well. Then to the people who, let's say, has some old world jewel crafting, who, you know, got it for, let's say, the mage tower, a lot of old world gems have been doing very, very well. You have the Sage Agate, you have the Lathiathan's Eye, you have the Queen's Garnet, and you have the Crimson Spinal. All four of them have been making some pretty good profit for me. Basically, what I'm doing is buying the uncut version, cutting them, and then selling the final product. There's not a ton of profit per item, but you sell them in bulk and the profit truly adds up. But yeah, guys, that is basically it for this video. Now, I did spend a lot of time on the first few markets, but that kind of involved a little bit of some extra math with the masteries, so I just wanted to make sure you kind of understand that process. A thing with the masteries is that TSM is not going to pick up on it unless you do some configuration yourself, so it's always good to understand the math behind it if you want to do some personal calculations. But everybody, I hope you can find at least one item from this list that you find interesting and that can make you some profit. Of course, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, or if you have any specific items that have been doing pretty well for you and you'd like to share. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to join the Discord if you want to be a part of our amazing community, and if you ever need to contact me, I am always in there. But as always, everybody, have a good day.